Hi everybody, welcome to the Ihlava Festival studio where our guest is Evgeny Afanevsky, director of Freedom on Fire, Ukraine's Fight for Freedom. Evgeny, for you, what is the main message of this film? Humanity, unity, that we are not allowed to neglect the war that is right now in this world because it was already neglected for eight years and uh, people who basically started this war, who unleashed these uh, evil acts, they've been unpunished for eight years, which allowed them to create more and more human crimes. So I think the main message is that we all need to unite as the one big family and together we can stop this massacre, together we can stop this World War III. In the credits there are a lot of directors of photography. How was it pulling together all this enormous wealth of material? You know, what? Uh, Winter on Fire had 28, this one had 43. I think if Winter on Fire, my Ukrainian uh, Maidan revolution story that I did in 2013-14 was one place, one square, one city. Here we have the entire country and also I was shooting outside of the Ukraine. So for me it was important to have so many lens, so many eyes, eyeballs on the ground so I can bring the comprehensive story to the world and tell this comprehensive story. Take my audience to the places where I was, where my friends were, where my DPs were. And it was important for me to, for the first time pr probably, to allow audience to be not just in the front lines like in use develop, developed their strategy to bring only front lines, only trenches, only the news from the front lines of the war, but front lines of the war this day is everywhere in Ukraine. So for me it was important to kind of collaborate with the big amount of filmmakers, some of them from Maidan, some of them new, to tell this comprehensive story and allow audience to understand the scope of the disaster that we live in today and understand that the World War III in today's world it's also through the eyes of the people, through the lens of the camera and it's also a camera that became a weapon. So it's a very unusual war, something that we're not used to see when we are watching the movies of Second World War. So it all was not easy, but I think in today's world, when you dedicate it to something, when you want to do something, all my team was dedicated to tell this story, and that's how, through the six months of this year, we created this. It's a very moving film. I cried you know, maybe seven times watching it. Is that deliberately constructed? Do you create it so that every short period there's another kind of emotional high with the stirring music and so on? Or is that just how it kind of unfolded naturally? You know what, I was crying this, at the premiere, I was crying this every time I was watching this on a big screen. Uh, you not saw me yesterday at the audience because for me, every time I'm watching this, I'm living it again and again and again. I guess that's life and that's the reality. So. I told the story how my heart told me to tell it, how uh, creatively I and my editor decided to tell this story, but in the same time, you know what, there is no intention. There is a human story that is unfolding in front of our eyes, and I guess it's not an easy to watch, but in the same time, there is importance to this story. And only when audience able to live what you were living watching this movie, they can connect to my characters and act to do some change. Russia, of course, is not a free country. The opposition is repressed greatly. But how much should we hold the Russian people responsible for what's happening in this terrible war? Listen, it's not Putin who is firing their guns. It's the people. So at the end of the day, there is responsibility. There is a huge responsibility on a lot of Russian people who are fighting inside of Ukraine. Yes, they are ordered to do that, but you know what? Also from the history, we know how many people in Ukraine were ordered to fire at the Ukrainians during the Maidan revolution and they refused. So again, it's a choice. It's a choice of the person. And I think there is a huge responsibility. There is a huge responsibility to learn the truth, to find the truth, to be educated and not to be blind and not to be closing your eyes. So I think there is a huge responsibility.
And how much should the West be held responsible for this situation, given that they did not react adequately in 2014 and afterwards? Listen, uh, I don't want to blame the West because each country going through their own disasters through, listen, we lived through eight years of craziness, including pandemic. I don't want to blame the West, but at the same time, I can blame the West if they will neglect it right now, because the lesson has been learned already. And if right now the West and the European Union and America will close their eyes to the situation, then I can say that they will be blamed for the World War III and the whole disasters that will happen. I don't want to blame them for the past. It was a great lesson for everybody to see what's happening. I think today's situation, it's a case study for dictators because in today's situation, also China looking at, the, at what's happening and learning if they will take over Taiwan or not, if they will react to the crimes of Putin or not, if they will slap him in the face, stop him or not. So I think it is an important moment. And then if the West will not unite with Ukraine, if the West will not help to stop this madness and this war, then we can blame the West. Well, Evgeny, thank you for an amazing film. Thanks for speaking to us. And thank you for watching. You have our festival studio.